I am delighted to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Brenton Pereira, Senior Manager, uh, Sales Ac Account Management at DSpace. With over 15 years of engineering and sales experience, Mr. Pereira leads a business development at DSpace, a global leader in solution for developing and testing complex control systems. His expertise spans product marketing, hill testing, and electrical design, and he is passionate about building the future of uh, autonomous driving and e-mobility. So please uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Brenton uh, onto the stage. So my name is Brenton Pereira. I am from uh, DSpace India. I lead uh, business development. Uh, and uh, our strategic focus for this presentation over here is basically on virtual validation strategies uh, for uh, in, the, in the context of uh, software-defined mobility. So we've he heard all through the day about SDVs and about the uh, a lot of failures and the risk of failures. Uh, and we've heard from uh, Mr. Vikram about uh, the fit rate and achieving said fit rate. And for this, you need to have robust validation strategies. Uh, and I wanted to uh, emphasize on a few ways or a few perspectives that are from the DSpace point of view. Uh, so we did a bit of a customer survey um, some time back, um, and we realized we created a word cloud about what is really uh, buzzing around the market, right? And uh, I think throughout the day, you already know uh, the answer is software-defined vehicle. This is something that has been on every form, every inquiry, every phone call, discuss discussion, presentation uh, for about uh, two to three years now. Uh, and we've, uh, we've realized that the entire validation, the verification and validation portfolio is going to go through a paradigm shift because of, of this concept. And right along with software-defined vehicle is still automated driving, e-mobility. These are still topics that everybody is talking about. But in the context of the SDV, there is going to be a huge change in all of these, the way we look at all of these concepts. So coming from the global automotive industry, let's look a little bit more into the Indian industry. And these are just some of the headlines we've seen in India this year. So we see that globally, car companies are at a, at a war to be the number one uh, uh, SDV provider out there. And um, as the rest of the headline says, everybody is also losing. Uh, we see in India there has been a marked shift towards trying to use uh, traction motor, uh, rare earth free magnets for traction motors and this has been something of a key priority for India uh, in, in, in this year at least. Uh, we also see that a lot of the global validation projects, a lot of the global R&D is now being focused in India and even though the automotive industry looks a little uh, dull around the around the global. Uh, I mean, okay, maybe I'm, when I'm talking about the global automotive industry, I will keep China out of it. <laughs> just for uh, just a joke there, uh, but we see a lot of projects and we see a lot of interest in India has a growing R and D or GCC capital. So where do, where am I going with this? So following this, Deloitte did an SDV study sometime in 2023. So maybe the results are, but the results kind of stay. Uh, true, even in 2025, according to me at least. And I see that over here, regulatory landscapes, <clears throat> senior management buy-in, <clears throat> lack of talent, skill, uh, uh, infrastructure, these are somehow not rated as high. But these are all due to the, the leading cause that Deloitte found, which was the complexity and cost. Of course, right up there is security and privacy too. But we can see that complexity and cost is something that has not been addressed well enough. And that is why you have the rest of the factors. A lot of the other factors are very manageable. If you have a clear answer to your management or the person providing you the capex, how am I going to address the complexity? How am I going to address cost? And over there, we've sort of classified these into some questions that we need to answer to address complexity and cost. And of course, when you address complexity, you need to test early, you need to test uh, virtually, you need to test smartly. And of course, um, and as we've heard through the day, we need to automate a lot of this testing right now that is being done very manually uh, across the world. 
Some of the questions that you need to address is basically with the concept of SDV and the service-oriented architecture. There is no, uh, there is no way to predict the interdependent, the number of interdependent uh, dependencies that come when it comes to vehicle functions. It's going to function as a phone, and has a, if your concept is a smartphone, then the services are going to be not fully deterministic and cannot be all tested for because you really cannot predict the combination of services that are required to enable a certain vehicle function. And exactly, how do you homologate safety critical functions? In a safety critical function or an SDV, uh, previously you had real time behavior, you were able to test for certain number of outcomes and that would be it. But with automated driving, and with a lot of the other infotainment and software defined vehicle functionalities that now may come true, how do you homologate safety critical functionality? So what DSpace sees from here is that DSpace has been a traditionally hardware and loop company. Uh, with hardware and loop, for those who are not completely well versed with uh, the industry I'm from, I always make the mistake of assuming that everybody knows what DSpace does. Uh, the hardware in loop simulator is what uh, we use uh, to validate automotive electronics. By simulating the rest of the vehicle, while you can validate whatever physical controller you have in your hand. And this image sort of speaks to all of my remaining slides, and that is that you can see that it does not matter what is your testing strategy, but if you want to test faster, earlier, cheaper, and smarter, and if you have cloud native testing, that then needs to be flashed over the air directly into a vehicle on the road, you need to start testing virtually as well. And as you can see from both these images, only one thing changes, only your controller gets virtualized. The rest of the environment remains the same. Why is this important? This is important because there are established legacy tool chains, testing methodologies, strategies, tools, mindsets across the automotive industry that you cannot just ask them to change suddenly one day. You need to address this. You, there is going to be a paradigm shift, and as you heard from Ved as well, this is going to be built ground up. There is no other way around it. But that does not mean that you completely abandon all of the processes that got you so far. You need to integrate the new thinking with what has been carried on in automotive industry for, so, for decades now. And that is why we always, uh, when customers come to us and ask us for strategies to test earlier, we recommend that you start virtualizing your testing so that you're able to utilize the same artifacts that you spent so many years developing, so many multiple teams working on it across the globe, and then enable the shift as easily possible for you. So, how do you understand hill and sill? This is a question that I get very often. Uh, what is uh, hardware in loop and what is the difference between hardware in loop and software in loop? The only dependency is that with the software defined vehicle, your hardware is now almost completely abstracted. Your hardware, your vehicle functionality now does not fully depend or at least the uh, pipe dream is to have it not depend on the underlying hardware, but vehicle functionality can be enhanced or developed by just upgrading the software or new code. You do not have to touch the hardware. That is the baseline of SDV, right? So when do you use Hill? You use Hill when you have to test for hardware dependencies. You need to test Hill when you have to test for hardware software integration, timing, network tests, electrical failures. For this, hardware in loop is a must. You have to use this testing methodology. And the, of course, the advantages have always been there uh, since the last three, four decades, that you can test all your safety critical functions. Uh, you can detect hardware software integration problems. And of course, this is one of the uh, testing methodologies that is indispensable to approvals and certifications. But does this mean that you only need hardware and loop testing? No. You can do a lot of testing currently being done on HIL systems, on SIL systems. And that is a big statement for me from DSpace to make, because hardware in loop is our core business. So software in loop testing technologies enable you to, to find de uh, debug er uh, errors quite early. 
And over here, we don't focus on the hardware-software integration, but on the software-software integration. This could be for one ECU. This could be for a system of ECUs. It remains the same across tier two, tier one, OEM, suppliers, everybody. You need to do software-software integration testing. And this software-software integration testing also enables you to have those continuous uh, nice sounding CI, CD, CT five lines to enable you to do continuous testing. And over here, uh, you can, of course, left shift, what we call the buzzword uh, in the HIL industry nowadays. Uh, left shifting also means that you save costs. How do you save costs? There is no hardware. These environments are easy to replicate across the globe. Of course, pending NDAs and IP discussions, but that's another discussion, yeah. And the advantages over here, you have fast iteration cycles, you can run test cases faster than real time, you can have nightly builds, you can decrease your dependency on an expensive hardware in loops system and free that utilization up for more pressing testing that you have to do with any of your other programs. And that is when you use SIL and HIL. So over here, what I'm trying to explain is that it is not an and or an or uh, situation where you use only hardware in loop or only software in loop, but you have to use both test strategies in a way that is complementary to each other. The impacts on the STV because of, uh, on, on, on the impact on development and testing because of the SDV con concept is basically, as I put it across in the last, uh, last slide, the separation of hardware and software is the key topic that you have to address. And vehicle functions, if you intend them to be primarily developed by software developers going forward with little or no visibility or uh, dependency on the underlying hardware, then the integration and testing costs are going to increase exponentially. And this is what you, you are going to find uh, there is a major impact on development and testing across uh, the automotive industry. So what are the uh, impacts of SDV on the, so just bifurcating again, so on hardware and loop, what is the impact of the SDV concept on hardware and loop? Uh, with the rise of the high performance compute, now you need higher software hardware integration tests. There is the communication tests and the timing tests of your hardware interaction with your HPC, especially with the middleware. And the, and the real-time capability of this testing is of utmost importance to be test tested. And you need to validate all of this in the lab before finally going into a production prototype. And that is, the, that is where the hill testing is of core purpose in the software-defined vehicle concept. With the software in loop uh, impact, uh, impact on software in loop, it's basically that we are trying to bring the agile DevOps way of operations into the automotive world. And over here, you need to enable, enable quick releases, virtual continuous testing, uh, quick, quick releases for, for uh, uh, and of course, the lack of ECU prototypes, because of course, the hardware is separate from the software anymore. You do not have the hardware available. And more and more, we are noticing that there are more and more software-related artifacts being shared for early testing, for early validation. And, of, and over here, of course, with the rising importance of the middleware, uh, the service-oriented architecture, and the infinite number of possibilities in how these services interact each other, software testing or virtual testing becomes quite important. If not, uh, you cannot do away without, with, with software and loop testing. But how about the other, uh, the other testing forms? Uh, what about model in loop? What about vehicle in loop? Are these not related or not, not required anymore? No, they do play a critical role. Again, when we talk about hardware in loop and software in loop, we are talking about a bell curve here. There are still a lot of testing that can be done as early, has a Simulink model, and as late, has a production prototype. And these tests are necessary and must be completed. And hill, sill, mill, will sufficiently complement each other to give you the confidence that your validation strategy works. And just to give you a small sneak peek of what other OEMs or the global OEMs have been doing, so we've been in involved in these particular projects that I've shown over here. And you can see over here where DSpace has enabled in each of these OEMs an integration platform where we have not gone in there and asked them to change everything from scratch. We have not asked them to integrate only DSpace-related uh, hardware or software. 
we have enabled them to integrate whatever it is, the tool chain, the strategy, uh, in-house, third party, however you have it. Uh, we have integrated that into our in-house software and loop integration platform. And that's why we have maintained continuity and we have found a huge level of success with, with, with these OEMs that are mentioned over here. And as you can see, uh, the use cases have also been quite widely different for each of these success stories over here. So that brings me to an end of the presentation. I hope that was informative for you and looking forward to some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Prenton. So now I would like to invite Mr. Shaila Shukla, director of LE Times to stage to present a memento as a token of appreciation to Mr. Pereira. Once again, a huge thanks to you, Mr. Prenton, for your enlightening talk on virtual validation strategies for software defined and mobile. Also, thank you so much, Mr. Sivakuka, for. <laughs>